what God kept telling me over and over, Brenda, was, you know, my love is extravagant. You don't have to settle for less than what I have for you, because what I have for you is is my best. I'm going to give you someone who sees you for the prize that you are. And and I talk about that, you know, that pearl of great price. Uh, we are pearl. If you're single, you're that pearl of great price, you know. And it, and if you're a uh, boyfriend or your whoever doesn't see you as that pearl of great price, mm. then he's not the one. And you don't want to be with anybody who's not willing to pay the price. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello, friends. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. Are you single and struggling with the wait for a meaningful relationship? Or do you know someone who is? Well, my guest today has written a book that will help you to change your mindset to achieve fulfillment. Wendy Griffith is a senior reporter, anchor, and co-host for the Christian Broadcasting Network. She's the author of You Are a Prize to Be Won, Don't Settle for Less Than God's Best. She was married for the first time in her 50s and has a wealth of encouragement for women of all ages that God is faithful. She's an amazing human being, a woman of character and grace. And Wendy, I want to welcome you, my friend. I am so glad to have you on the program today. Hey, Brenda. It's so nice. Thank you so much for having me on. I've been wanting to be on your show because it's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I love you, my friend, and we're just going to have a great conversation. I think you have some amazing things to share for uh, women and men who are are in a season of wait. And, uh, you know, that might be over many different things, but I think the same mindset really applies to whatever it is that we're waiting for. But, you know, I began to read your book on a plane after we had seen each other uh, in Virginia Beach a couple years ago, and I was just, um, I was really impacted by how much I related to your story. I mean, I had my own share of experiences with uh, painful experiences and brokenness and uh, even divorce for me. And I, I sat there and I just was stunned. And I thought, wow, if I had only known that I was not valuing myself the way that I should have been, um, you know, it, it might've changed the trajectory for me and the things that I had to really experience to come to that truth. So I'd love for you to just give us your story, your backstory, and tell us what inspired you to write the book. Brenda, I'm so glad you mentioned that because sometimes we think that we know our value. And you said you were stunned because you that revelation came to you. And that's what I was going through. I thought, you know, I've got it all together. Okay, I've got a good job. And, you know, I just bought my first apartment or whatever and things are going well and all I need is a boyfriend and you know <laughs> and I was about 46 and I I did meet this guy and um you know he checked a lot of the boxes he was tall dark and handsome he was he was Christian and um and and I honestly didn't even like him that much at first but then a few months into the relationship it something just sort of clicked and I thought, you know, this could be the one. And then I was all in. And I think that at that point he sensed that. And, but at any rate, a few months later, he finally said, you know, I love you, but I don't know if you're the one. And I remember feeling like I got slapped and kissed Mm -hmm. at this time because I, I'd been wanting to hear those words, you know, so desperately, Um, but something, I mean, I literally got a, a real stomach ache. I thought there's something not right with this, but because I didn't understand my value, I didn't have the sense to say, well, you can take your butt and your butt and leave and get back in your truck and go back to where you came from because I am worth and I love you, period. And Mm -hmm. it took me about six more months um, of dating. In fact, I told myself I'm going to make him love me. And that's always a mistake because if a guy says, I love you, but especially if you're in the marriaging age, you know, if you're, if you're dating with marriage in mind and a guy says, I love you, but okay, what is that? What does that mean? Well, to, at, at that time I thought, well, I've just got to convince him. I've got to do, I've got to work harder. I've got to be the perfect girlfriend. And I ended up exhausting myself. What that means, ladies, 
and gents, because women can play the same game, is I'm keeping my options open. You know, I, I like you. I love, well, he said, I love you, but I'm keeping my options open. You're there, there might be something better out there. And if that happens, you know, if, when you know your value and somebody says you, you, um, you, you run. Okay. You yeah. You realize the deficit actually that's in them to put you on that scale of comparison. And I think that's very powerful what you're saying, but often, most often women are just sucked into that black hole and feel like, okay, I've got to jump through all the hoops because this is the guy because he meets some kind of criteria. And do you think that perhaps we're looking at the criteria and not the heart and some deeper things that we should be looking at? And then does that also mirror the fact that we need to do the same with ourselves? So when he broke up with me, I was devastated because for some reason, I actually thought that he might propose and that that would solve everything. And then, you know, and I wanted the fairy tale. I wanted the, the bridal showers and the, and the honeymoon. And I'd been a bridesmaid and, I, you know, with my two sisters and many friends. And I was always very happy to do that and joyful for them. But I wanted it to be my turn on my time. And that wasn't going to happen. So he, he finally broke up with me. And when that happened, God said, uh, you loved him, but you didn't love yourself. And it was sort of a revelation. And then he said, write about your story. And I mean, it just poured out. And God had told me years before, and you see that you are a prize to be won. And, but I didn't, I hadn't learned the lesson yet. But I knew that would be the title of my book because that was a rhema word from God to me. Years before I had even met this guy, he was telling me, you know, don't settle you are a prize to be won. And so it, the book just, you know, God said, write about your test. And, and that's what I did. Wow. So was the book in a sense, a little bit of uh, therapy for you to be able to unpack all of that? I mean, what did that process look like for you to really come to that place of understanding your value regardless? Absolutely. It was definitely therapy for me. And as I was writing some of the chapters, I would share them on Facebook and I was amazed at the feedback I was getting. And so I was healed, you know, during the writing and, and hearing from a lot of uh, men, a lot of our brothers in Christ who shared stories. Um, and some of them were so profound that I put them in the book because I was writing it at the time. And I so there's a lot of male voices in here because this is not a book about, you know, I don't like men anymore. No, we, we love men. We just want the right men. Mm -hmm. And um, so definitely what I, but what God kept telling me over and over, Brenda, was, you know, my love is extravagant. You don't have to settle for less than what I have for you because what I have for you is, is my best. I'm going to give you someone who sees you for the prize that you are and, and I talk about that, you know, that pearl of great price. Uh, we are pearl. If you're single, you're that pearl of great price, you know. And if, and if your uh, boyfriend or your whoever doesn't see you as that pearl of great price, mm. then he's not the one. And you don't want to be with anybody who's not willing to pay the price. In fact, I got a story because it was about a year after the breakup, and I was still kind of going through it. And this man that I uh, walked up to me at a, at a CBN conference and, um, I don't think I'd ever seen it before, but he just said, I, he said, I have a word, uh, word for you from the Lord. I saw you here last year with the, the guy I'd been dating that broke my heart. And he said, the Lord said to tell you, um, he wasn't willing to pay the price for the pearl of great price. And I mean, talk about tears because yeah. that, but I needed to hear that. I needed to hear over and over that I was worth love, that I was worth a real love and that, you know, God had someone for me, which he did. And it was just a little bit longer. Oh, amen. Well, you know, uh, as I was reading your book, I was married to Paul, my husband, and I thought of my own journey and how that, you know, we were engaged for five, uh, not engaged. We, 
I better back that up. We were not engaged for five years, but we had known each other for five years before we actually were engaged. And so it was this very un unusual process um, that took me to some depths of, of facing some of those very things within myself um, and being able to be okay. And I had come to a point in my life when I met Paul where I also was saying, you know what, I'm going to be responsible for my own happiness. And I started buying the flowers and putting them in a vase and lighting the candles and making the pretty dinners. And I loved my life. And you know, at that time I was living in a, a cute little apartment and I was working as a, a designer in these multi-million dollar homes, but I would go home just so content in my cute little cocoon and loved celebrating life. And I think that's what you're speaking to is to be able to celebrate life and joy from wherever you are, whatever vantage point you are. And, you know, it was in that season that I met someone who was so different from all my other experiences because I too had attracted the kind of people that wanted me to just fit their image. And I think what I want my, what I want our viewers to hear today is that there are two different kinds of people. There's the ones who are going to be shallow. They're not looking for what's inside of you. They're not interested in getting to really know you. That's where the worth comes from. That's where the value is. And they're more interested in how your image or how your performance meets their criteria. And so, you know, can you speak to perhaps the issue of identity and the healing that needs to take place for people men or women uh, that are struggling with being seen and heard and valued, what's that process going to look like for them? Well, I love, okay, I have a chapter called Be the Prize, and you were doing that. You were enjoying your singleness, okay? You were making dinners and buying the flowers, and I and I say, you know, wear that red dress. Don't save it. Yeah. I had this red dress that I, I literally bought, and I was like, okay, when I get a boyfriend, wear, <laughs> you know, it hung there for years, and um, you know, and, and I decided I, I would say, God, you know, you're not bringing me a boyfriend or a husband yet. I want to climb Kilimanjaro. I want to climb to Everest Base Camp. And I went on all these amazing uh, mountain ex expeditions because that was a passion. I'd really gotten into hiking during uh, my 40s. And I, and I just loved it. But then I was like, I need a bigger mountain. And so God kept giving me mountains to climb. And I would go on my own. I mean, I flew to Africa by myself. I flew to um, Nepal, uh, Kathmandu, you know, by myself. And I had a time of my life climbing these mountains and having these experiences and seeing the world. And I did, I did stories. And, you know, I was, yes, I was keeping my eyes open. And I kept thinking, you know, I'm going to meet him on the plane. And I wanted to meet somebody. But I said, Lord, you know, I want to enjoy my single years. And I did. And it was actually hiking that ultimately led me to my future husband and my current my husband now and we've been married for three years and uh so uh, you know i guess my main message to people is you didn't miss it you know and single just like you said brenda enjoy that you're single that's a gift singleness is a gift the gift and if you know if we just stay in our jammies and watch Netflix and wait for someone to knock at the door. I mean, we're not really fun to do. Now, don't get me wrong. I like to do that all <laughs> with my husband now, but yeah. you're so right. Whatever, you know, your passion, you need to be you now and enjoy who you are. And so I love that you did that when you were uh, saying, you said something, um, you know, that struck me and that, you know, in that season you were saying, okay, God, give me, give me a bigger mountain. And I love that you were um, pushing yourself beyond your old limits. You were not afraid to get outside of the framework of your comfort zone. And I think that's a really important element that um, more people should be uh, embracing because I think that the tendency when you're feeling insecure 
and doubtful is to want to stay within your own little comfort zone and you want it to come to you. But in all actuality, God is saying, I'm going to enlarge you for blessing, but there's going to be a process involved in that. I, am I right? Gosh, yes. He uses, you know, he used that heartbreak that I had, which was, I mean, at that point in my life, it was the worst thing I'd ever been through. And, um, honestly still is, <laughs> um, because it wasn't a quick fix. I wanted to be literally, I went on a two week vacation after the breakup and I thought, okay, I'm going to come back healed and ready to just, you know, I pulled my suitcase in the door and I burst into tears because I still had, you know, even though I took this shell and I threw it in the ocean and Belize, and I'm like, okay, this is symbolic of all the pain and the rejection and everything I'm feeling right now. No, I carried it home in my suit. I mean, I just, yeah. and so it's a process. Like you said, you know, God said this, well, God told me two things. He said, mourn and move on easier said than done. And then later he said, this season will end. And that gave me hope because if you're going through heartbreak right now, I read a lot about what God taught me about heartbreak and so many great scriptures in here that will help you heal because what I did, Brenda, because I couldn't heal myself and, and time does not necessarily heal heartbreak, but what, what healed my heartbreak was, was this. And I stayed in the word and I stayed at Jesus feet and I would go hiking by myself and just pour out my heart in. And I would feel, I mean, honestly, it was some of the best times I ever had with the Lord. Cause he says, what does he say in Psalm 146, I believe, or 47, I'm not sure. He says, I'm close to the brokenhearted. And I, you know, it's, I'd never want to, I never want to go through that heartbreak again. And I even told the Lord while I was writing my book, no matter what, no matter how many women read this book, no matter how many, you know, people say they like it, it'll never be worth it. Well, after about, I don't know, 3,000 emails, and I finally said, okay, God, it was worth it because yeah. God doesn't waste your pain. You know, He mm -hmm. doesn't. Oh. He's faithful. And mm -hmm. honestly, so good. some of the best times I've ever had with the Lord were, were, were when I was walking, when He was walking with me through. And I, I have chills now because I'm, you know, we were made for that fellowship and I don't want to go through heartbreak. Nobody does. But um, if you're going through it, draw close to him because it will be, you will look back on this time and think, wow, God really cared for me. You know, he gave me these words, these, you know, you know, like during that time, he said, Wendy, you didn't miss it. You know, he said, now I'm going to bring you my best. And I, those are my journal and I held on to them, even though months and a couple, few more years went by. Cause that was, it was, I didn't meet my husband until the summer of 2017. And I didn't even know he was my husband for a few more months. You know, it was like, and, and I was in such a good place that even at 52, almost 53, I was like, I had learned my lesson. I, even at that age, I was like, well, you know, unless God says you know, he's the one or, because I was getting these signs and I said, no, signs are good, but I got peace. Peace. Yeah. Is mm. your, that peace that's, you know, that you just, you don't want to be apart from that person anymore. Yeah. So good. I'm really glad that you touched on this particular part of the story because I think it's in the painful um, heartbreak where we're just split wide open. You know, we feel like we're walking around with a big hole that everybody can see um, that, uh, you know, we want to bolt and run. We want to, you know, cover up and, and protect ourselves. But this is actually a really good place to be. And so for our viewers today that might be watching and might be identifying with this and they're hurting. I mean, people are hurting for so many reasons. So whatever that reason is, I want them to really be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged because it's in those moments that we actually meet Jesus. And just like you, Wendy, I met him there in those most painful moments and Really, he was the, the lover of my soul and the lifter of my head. And I became began to know him more intimately in those 
days. And I honestly can look back and say, I miss that season. I love him dearly. He is my best friend. And, and I talk to the Lord all the time. It's just a different season for me. So what you said about the gift of singleness is so good. I, I'm getting chills thinking about it too. And I just really feel there's someone out there that is needing this word of encouragement because they feel so devalued in the chaos and the mess of not only what we've just been through over the last couple of years or so, but in the, the fractured relationships and you know the confusion that's on so much of humanity right now. So there's a cry from so many people. And I feel your book can speak to more than just the, the single person's plight, but to the lonely soul, maybe people in a marriage or they're, you know, engaged in a, a career that keeps them on the go all the time, but they're lonely. And so I'd love for you to just take a moment and encourage some people today with um, what that looks like to meet Jesus there. Mm. I just remember those walks and those hikes and, and then hearing that still small voice. That is the thing that to me, really, that was my lifeline while I was waiting because waiting is the hardest part. If you're single and you're tired of waiting, I get it. I mean, I was, you know, I'd crossed over. I remember turning 50 and thinking, okay, surely God is going to bring him this year. And, and he didn't, you know, but I yeah. had promises and I'm yeah. not, there's lots of promises in the Bible, but those promises that I heard in my spirit, it's called a rhema word. And, mm -hmm. and you might be, um, if you don't know what that is, you, you just, you practice the presence of God and you get in prayer and then you listen and you hear, and it's, and it's, the still small voice and God will give you that and then write it down because I, so many times I will go back to the Lord and say, God, remember when you said, now you're going to bring me your best. And, or I'd go back and say, or I'd even quote the scripture, God, you say two are better than one. I would either quote scripture or I would remind God something he said, and I would spend time with him. And the other most important thing you need to do as a single who's waiting and, and getting discouraged is get that prayer partner friend, the one that like on that Friday night when everyone's out and you're just so mad and you're just, you, you're screaming in your car and you're like, why am I having another weekend? Okay. Yes. That happened to me many times. And I, I would call my friend Rhonda and I'm writing a new book right now called you didn't miss it. Your weight is not in vain because God has blessed me so much. And, and I write, I dedicate a whole chapter to Rhonda because she's a happily married woman. And, but she had to, she didn't have to wait. She says she had to wait. She was 27 when she got married. So I'm like, I don't think, <laughs> but, but the way she's so cute, the way she tells it, she did have to wait. Um, yeah. Because she wanted to get married at 22. So she had to wait, but she always would pray for me and encourage me and give me scriptures like um, uh, Psalm 84, 11, God will not withhold any good thing from those who walk up, uprightly. So God's not going to, uh, God is not stingy. You know, he's not like holding your husband back saying, you know, you've been, you know, you're not good enough. No, he, he has a perfect timing. And I mean, stars really do have to align. Some things have to align. My, my husband was, um, married before, you know, he went through a, a, a painful divorce. So, you know, he had his own journey. He had to go through his own dark night of the soul. And then God put us together and, you know, come to find out he was crying out to God, Lord, you know, do you have, you know, someone for me? And so, um, and it was me. So, you know, wow. But <laughs> yeah. Things, you know, two things, Brenda, get that word from God that you can hold yeah. on to like I said, you know, for me, God said, you didn't miss it. It's not too late. And that friend that will lift up your hands, your arms, because you're going to get tired of waiting and you're going to have those days where you just are over it. And you, and every time I would get off the phone with her, it would be like, okay, I'm good for another week. You know? <laughs> yes. And that's what having a community 
um, is all about a church, you know, a, a village and, and those who mentor you and pray for you and hold your hand and hold them up sometimes because we can, you know, our emotions can get the best of us on the journey. And uh, you're a strong woman. I'm a strong woman. But, you know, the, we've, we understand what it is to be at the bottom of the pit emotionally. And, you know, I agree with you that oftentimes it's when we think God is saying no, he's actually saying, I'm preparing you and the person that I'm bringing together for purpose. And, you know, if we'll just get back into that disposition of trusting him, knowing that he is good and he has the best in mind for each of us, then his timing is perfect. And that was the case for us as well. Uh, for Paul and I, we both had come from broken marriages and had some, we both had a lengthy amount of time that God was doing a work in both of our hearts. And if that had not been completed, I can tell you, we would not have been able to face some of the things that, you know, that warfare comes when you're involved in ministry, especially in a ministry that is uh, public and, you know, you can oftentimes find yourself dealing with things that you've got to know how to navigate. And so God's building, you know, that character and that preparation for you to be able to become one and trust one another and be able to be lit on fire and anointed for his purpose. And I just really admire that about you, Wendy, that you waited uh, and that you didn't rush into something just to fix the problem. Uh, you know, there's a song that says, uh, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. And, you know, I was also 50 when I married Paul and he helped me celebrate my 50th birthday. And, you know, it was a, such a wonderful season of life, the picture of restoration for me, but could, did I, at one time feel like, gosh, if I could go back and know the things that I know now, would I? And I think that most of us would want to. Uh, the grace of God, though, for whoever's listening today is that he will take whatever's broken and ruined and he makes all things new again. But you've got to do what Wendy's saying, and that is to embrace the process, slow down to the speed of life, and let him do what he wants to do in and through you to prepare you. Um, I know that you've really spoken to what it is to be content with yourself. Was there any point in this, uh, on this journey that you felt like you were challenged to feel more comfortable with your own vulnerabilities and in your own skin, so to speak? Uh, to be able to embrace imperfection. Uh, because, I mean, you're a beautiful woman. You have it all together. You uh, run a tight schedule. You probably have to run a tight ship. And to outward perceptions, they might think, well, you know, she probably never feels vulnerable. She's always large and in charge. But I'd love for you to speak to the importance of vulnerability and how that enriches even your relationship. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's deep. And, um, I'll take you there, my friend. <laughs> you're, you're, you're good. You are good. I'll tell you this. Um, I, I think I was amazed after marriage um, that um, just how much more, when I was going through something, how much I appreciated my, how much more I fell in love with my husband when I saw that he didn't, run from me when I had a vulnerability, you know, it, you know, whether it was when my gosh, four months after we got married, my thyroid decided to go haywire and I ended up in the hospital. I'd never been in the hospital before. And I was afraid he would think he married a lemon, you know, or that he, <laughs> and yeah. friend, when I looked over at him sitting by me and I'm in my hospital bed, cause I, I had to stay one night, but it was still traumatic. And and he's sitting there and I'm thinking, wow, I'm so blessed. I'm so, and I, and I, I think my vulnerability was in the fact that I needed him and I had really needed anyone before and I'm married now, you know, and 
so it was eye opening to me, but it, and there were other stories, but I fell more every time there was what you would consider something not great. God would use it so that I tr fell more in love with my husband. And I'm like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that was possible, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. So when you go through things together, we've only been married three years. So, you know, I'm still in, still newlywed, I guess. Um, I like to think so anyway, <laughs> we are having so much fun. I mean, we're, neither one have kids, but I have, and, he, and he's an only child and, um, I have lots of nieces and nephews and they just love uncle bill. And that just warms my heart. Cause they're, they're kind of like six and seven and eight. And we've been teaching them how to paddleboard and they love to go out in the boat with Uncle Bill because he's a fisherman and they, they especially love his fried flounder. So, I mean, I, I, I love the journey that I'm on, you know, now with marriage, it's completely different. Um, and, um, but I was ready for it. And, but if you're single, if you've been rejected, I just want to say you haven't been rejected. You've been ejected to something greater. And it's not like Brenda said, it's not punishment. It's preparation. God is preparing you for the, the right one. And when you get those revelations, because rejection is the hardest thing to heal from. I think, you know, even like deep down in my soul, I knew that guy was not the one, but I wanted the fairy tale more than I wanted the reality that God was trying to, I ignored the red flags and, but God was still gracious. He said, when he said, it's time to let go, even before the guy broke up with, you, he said, it's time to let go. I rebuked the devil. I said, <laughs> Dang. you yeah. know, it, do all of this stuff. but then God was still gracious and he, you know, he walked with me through the heartbreak and he, and he promised me because I, this was the best word. And this was, um, gosh, two years after the breakup, he said, now I'm going to bring you my best because I was, com I was complaining. I was saying, God, you know, I gave that guy my, one of my best years and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting older. He said, you're right, but now I'm going to bring you my best. And he, God was faithful and he did it, did he did it. I didn't recognize Bill as my husband immediately. It wasn't love at first sight, but by the end of the summer, we started dating at the beginning of, uh, in late June, by the end of the summer, end of September, I was sitting down with my brother and showing him pictures of the whole summer. And I mean, I'll never forget. It was September 27th, 2017. I remember the day that I knew I had fallen in love and it was like, mm. wow. Okay. God is faithful. Yeah. You know? And so even oh. like, don't have like chill bumps the first time you meet him. Don't, you know, don't. That's right. Yeah. God, it, it may, and thank God I didn't because right. I'm the girl that, you know, if I like someone, they're mm -hmm. going to do it. And that let the man pursue you. So God did me a favor of sort of hiding how I really felt and then he let, so that let Bill pursue me. That's so good. And you're so right. Uh, and you know, it's not about chemistry. That'll throw you off if you're just looking for chemistry, but look to the deeper uh, well of who a person is. And that goes for both sides, for, for men and women. Because if you want a relationship that's going to last uh, and stand through the tests of time and every storm, that's the person that you want. And God knows where those people are. How can we find your book, Wendy? Uh, Amazon's the best way to get it. You'll have it like really quick. Um, okay. And, um, Barnes and Noble. Awesome. It's an amazing book. And I wish we had another half an hour. I sure enjoyed having you with me today, my friend. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. I hope we can do it again. Thank you, Brenda. God bless you. Take care. God bless you. And to my friends, I want to thank you. And I want you to remember that it's in the pain that the beauty is discovered. It's in the vulnerability that value is established. And God will take you and he will lead you through those painful moments and help you to let your guard down so that you too can have your best and be, remember, you are a prize to be won. 
Thanks for being with me today. I invite you again to be with me next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.